Welcome to my sample turn for the Alamo Remember. This is a simple uh, one or two player game by Victory Point Games. It has recently been released with upgraded components, mounted puzzle map and thick counters. Everything looks pretty good. Um, I wanted to film a usual review, one of my usual reviews, like all the other ones, uh, but I noticed that uh, the turn here has many small steps, and if I just go through an explanation of all the steps one after the other, I'm afraid it's going to be too abstract, uh, I don't know that my usual formula will work for this game. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the turn, and I'm going to uh, play a turn at the same time, that means I'm going to uh, give you a sample turn in my video. I'm going to show you the solitaire version of the game. Uh, the game can be played with one, uh, you know, by one or two players, uh, but I haven't played it with two players. So this video and also then the review that will follow uh, are about the solitaire version of the game only. And then I guess I'll try to launch myself in some completely wild guesses of how it may be to play the game with two players. I simply haven't had the chance and uh, I don't know when I will have the chance actually because of my crazy schedule. But back to us. The topic, Alamo Remembered, <clears throat> uh, pretty, uh, pretty well known. You, the player of the solitaire version, uh, represent uh, the uh, Texian forces that will defend the Alamo desperately against up to three waves of Mexican attackers. The game is the board is divided in six areas. Each area has a section of the wall on which you will place your own units, and it has a corresponding approaching area where you place the Mexican units that are approaching the game. At the beginning of the game, you set up your units on the board. There are several types of units that you have: heroes rifles, uh, cannons, and dummies. As you can see, pieces have a number printed in the top right corner and that represents the strength of the unit. Dummies, well, don't have any strength. Uh, other units have one or two points of strength. You can set up up to six units in each section of the wall. Each section of the wall, as you can see, also has a number there, which is the breach value. The higher the number, the harder it is for the Mexicans to uh, go through the wall and to enter the Alamo from there. Also, at the beginning of the game, you will place Mexican attackers on the board already, face down. There is a system that will tell you how to deploy Mexican units at the beginning of the game. But this is pretty much how it works. Uh, the game can last up to three turns, after which you have a last stand, but the last stand may also happen earlier if the uh, Mexican attackers managed to get into the Alamo. Here you have areas for some special pieces that are only used in the variant versions of the game. Today I'm going to tell you about the standard game. The first phase of return after deployment, Texan deployment, and after the Mexican approach is the Texian ball shot, during which your uh, cannon units will eliminate a number of Mexican units equal to their strength value. For example, this is a cannon with a strength of 1, then it eliminates one Mexican unit in the section in front of it, uh, randomly of course, because the Texan unit, the Mexican units are phased down, I eliminate this one, it is a Mexican unit with a value of 1, Mexican units can have a value from 0 to 1, but the vast majority has a value of 1. Here we have one point of strength from our cannon. We eliminate this unit here. One. What do we have here? A unit. There's also a, only a single facing unit here. This is easy. That's the target. Two units are going to be eliminated by the powerful 18 pounder. Let's say these two ones. All right. This one. I eliminate this one. And oh, nobody's approaching here, so that's pretty easy. Okay, the Mexican attackers got a dent in the army. Now it is time for the Texian defenders to move. I can move any and all of my riflemen, dummies, and heroes, not the cannons. The cannons, once deployed, stay there for the rest of the game. So I can move any other piece on the board, but the cannons 
to an adjacent area with two restrictions no more than six pieces per section of the wall that is also the uh, maxim maximum stacking limit at the beginning of the game also if I move a unit out of a section then I cannot move units into that section during the same movement phase the rules say imagine each section as a one-way door if somebody goes out then nobody goes in let me look at the map well um, I'm going to move these guys here here uh, I'm trying to move some people from areas where there aren't many attackers coming to areas where there are more attackers coming um, this unit here here Um, that is it. This is all for my movement. I'm not sure that uh, that's a great choice. Maybe I should have thought a little bit more about this, but this is just to give an example of a sample turn. Also, I notice when I play my during action report, when I film myself playing games, I make mistakes either about the rules or I just make bad strategic decisions. Uh, it seems obvious to me because differently from when I'm just playing and I concentrate on the game and trying both to think about how to play and what to do in the game and how to explain to you what's happening so just uh, I multitasking and I make mistakes on what happens here so I apologize in advance if that is happening here if that is going to happen uh, or if I make very pitiful decisions here now Mexican reinforcement phase during this phase we take three units three one uh, strength Mexican units and we put them together with the reinforcements for that turn which is a Casadores unit with a strength of two each turn the Mexican units uh, attackers will bring in a two value uh, defender now we make a single stack and we have to figure out where this stack is going to go it all the reinforcements will join a single uh, a single group or in any case they will attack a single section of the wall so to determine what they do I need to for to determine where they go I need first to determine which are the three um, weakest sections of uh, the wall of the Alamo because the attackers will reinforce there there is in the rule book uh, an algorithm or whatever it is a formula a procedure that allows you to determine what are the three which are the three lowest sections of the wall for each section of the wall I need to add together the wall strength value which is the, uh, the yellow number plus double the cannon battle strength on that wall plus half for each other Texian unit on the wall. It's uh, still hidden because in the two-player game um, at this point all units but cannons are still hidden. Uh, to me that doesn't really happen in the one-player game because I don't see the point. I guess it just means that all units but cannons count 0.5. So you total those things together, you uh, subtract the Mexican battle strength for that wall that also means that we have to reveal all of the Mexican units in this phase so we can subtract their strength from the uh, from the uh, defense of the wall so I need to do that little mathematical operation for all of the six the sections of the wall and then I determine which are the three weakest ones uh, if there is a tie I'll roll a die I need to determine weakest second weakest and third weakest uh, what I do so I can remember the value the defense value of each is I prepare each time a player race such as this one and I write down the defense value of each section so then I have it in front of me the um, I have in front of me the value of each section I don't think you need to sit down here and watch me doing my math so I'm going to do that calculation uh, by myself and then I'm going to re uh, to, to start filming again once I have the, the information I need to show you okay here are my calculations hoping I did not make a mistake I may have uh, this is clearly the lowest value, 3.5, then I have several 6 areas, so I roll the dice to determine 2nd lowest and 3rd lowest. 
Now I need to roll on this table here. I roll 1d6 and the result will tell me where the reinforcements arrive. They arrive to the lowest breach value, that means that section. Back to the board, that means this section here. Oh, we're in trouble. That's a lot of people. There really is a lot of people. We really are in trouble here in this section. David Crockett, you will need to work hard now. Next phase is Taxian Grape Shot, during which the cannons facing the approach areas that have been reinforced can attack again following the procedure that we saw before. Uh, technically, in the two-player game, here the Mexican units are all still phased down, so as a Texian player, I shouldn't be able to choose which one it is. Uh, I usually really die, but here we have seven units, so I need to determine that randomly. I need to shuffle the units. Oh, there's something going everywhere. I need to shuffle them in my hand. The other hand is holding the camera, and I'll just let one fall. This one. That's the one that that cannon there attacked. With six or less units, of course, it is much easier to determine things randomly. You just roll one d6. Also, if I had a d10 with me, that would work too. But I don't have one, so we do that little thing instead. Now, that was the Texian grape shot. Now it is time for our Texan units to do some rifle fire, to execute some rifle fire, works just as the cannons attack, this time riflemen, uh, riflemen and heroes will attack the Mexican units and they will eliminate the number of Mexican units equal to their total battle strength. Here we have three points of battle strength from uh, Texian units, that means three of these units will be eliminated. Now we can roll a die because we only have six. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we only had five. Wait, that means that before it was only six? Then I didn't need to do all that crazy shuffling. Um, no, this is six. One, two, three, four, five! Yes! The Cazadores, these are very powerful units. It was a powerful unit because it is no more. Then, uh, we have two more shots. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, come to think, all of these units are the same, so I can just remove one, it doesn't matter. That was the rifle fire for there. Rifle fire here, two points of rifle fire. Here we do need to roll. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One point, but no attackers. One point of rifle fire, two attackers. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the one, two, three. One, two points of fire, rifle fire. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. And six. No attackers here. Okay, that was fun. Oh, the Texians have attacked the Mexican attackers several times, but unfortunately now it is time for the Mexicans to try an assault. What did I tell you about forgetting things and getting things wrong when I'm playing and talking? I knew it would happen, it did happen. Uh, now, as I was filming the original segment, I realized that I forgot um, of something, about something that happens during the Mexican assault. First, you reveal the Mexican unit's face up. Then, each Mexican unit eliminates a number of Texian units equal to its battle strength from among those defending the wall segment it is approaching. This Mexican unit eliminates a Texian unit. First, you remove dummies. If there aren't enough dummies, then you start removing riflemen. And if all the riflemen in a section are destroyed and you still have Mexican strength points, then you lose hero units. Cannons are not lost in this manner. After 
this uh, uh, elimination of texture units, which I forgot to talk about in the original segment, uh, and you will go back to that segment in a little bit. Then you have the breach determination. I'll tell you in the other segment, or I've told you in the other segment what that is. I simply had forgotten that before the breach determination, there is this other phase here. Now back to the original video. At this point in the two-player game, you have all the surviving Mexican units being placed face up. Then you simply count the number of Mexican units, uh, strengths, point strengths. So basically the strength of each unit there. You compare that with the breach number of each section. And if the total strength attacking a section of the wall equals or exceed the uh, breach, the strength of the value, then alas, we have a breach there. Which means, in this case, these three units have indeed achieved a breach in that section. That is the only breach in the game. But it is enough. Uh, that means that the game will be over at the end of the last stand phase, which is the special phase which is placed, which is played after a breach happens. During that phase, the survivors of the Alamo gather in the courtyard. Uh, a lot of Mexican units come in. The guns of the section that was breached actually uh, now belong to the Mexican player who is going to use them against the Alamo defenders. There's going to be a little bit more of a bloodbath there at the end of which all of the Alamo survivors are going to be removed from the game and at that point you count victory points and that will determine the level of victory of the Mexican player or the level of gameplay victory of the Texian player because of course the Texian will lose the battle but you can still play, you can still win the game because that's the way in which the victory conditions have been set up.